On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1965. We're going to be taking a look at Dean Martin, and he's going to be performing Everybody Loves Somebody. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus, and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So let's get Dean up on screen and see how he gets on. Well, they're all waiting to come on. Let's do six or seven more and we'll get right off. <laughs> Everybody loves somebody sometimes. Everybody falls in love somehow. Something in your kids just told me that some time is now. Everybody finds somebody someplace. There's no telling where love may appear. Something in my heart keeps saying. That some place is here. If I had you in my shower, <laughs> then every minute, every hour, every boy would find what I found in your arms. Everybody loves somebody sometimes And although my dreams were overdue Excuse me, Jerry. You took your show away, huh? For uh, someone like you If I had it in my power I would arrange for every girl to have your charm Then every minute and every hour Every boy would find what I found in your arms Everybody loves somebody sometimes And although my dreams were overdue Like you. And there we have it. As always, the link to this video is going to be in the description below. And on the original video, there is a long intro to it where Dean is just addressing the crowd, but also just showing what a likable person he is and the act as a whole, because he's always acting a little bit tipsy and has a drink in his hand, and he speaks about those things as well. It's definitely worth going to that original video to check out the intro. I have intentionally left in a little bit of the intro before Dean starts singing, just to highlight a point that I'm gonna make about Dean's talking voice and his singing voice, because Throughout this intro, you can hear that Dean, in his natural talking voice, has quite a lot of head voice in the sound, but then as soon as he starts singing, everything changes. There's a totally different tonality to the way that he delivers his vocal when he's singing as opposed to when he's talking. So rather than trying to explain without an example, I've queued up the video here so that we can listen to Dean giving this quick intro and then we'll cut to the first note of the song. So here's the intro. Well, they're all waiting to come on, let's do well, they're all waiting to come on. That voice that he's using, obviously I'm not American and I can't do accents. I'm not gonna sound like Dean, but 
That is a head voice sound. It's not full of body. It hasn't got that resonance and that chest voice sound of when he then starts to sing. So comparing this voice that we've just heard to this. Everybody. There is such a difference between the talking voice and the singing voice. So what is happening in this five second period that means the voice sounds totally different and what Dean is doing is lowering his larynx. I'm gonna give you guys something that you can do quickly at home to experience what a lowered larynx is. And guys are gonna be able to feel where the voice box, the Adam's apple is a lot more easily than girls because on guys it's a lot more pronounced and it sticks out a bit. But once you've found that lump in your throat, if you make a very dull sound Try to imagine that you're at school and your mate's done something really stupid and you go, duh. If you make that sound, have your hand on your Adam's apple, your voice box while you're doing it and you'll find that it shoots downwards. And that is a lowered larynx. Now, when that happens, it means that there is more space above the vocal cords to resonate, to make more sound. So when I go, duh, that is so much fuller sounding than going when I cut off and raise up the larynx. So in this example, when Dean's talking, he's got a lot of head voice in the sound and his larynx will be in a neutral position, which means it's just in the middle. It's where it is when you talk, but then he lowers it when he wants to get into his singing voice. So we have such a difference tonally between those two positions of the larynx when he starts out with a song and goes straight into everybody. It is in that lowered position. If he kept his larynx where it was when he was talking, it would sound like this. Everybody. Which is totally different. When you just sing it, with a lowered larynx, you get that body and that's what Dean is getting. And once you add all of that extra space in there and the resonance takes over, you get such a full tone, it's where Dean's voice shines because he's got such a unique tone and thick sound to that lowered larynx position that he could maintain while he was singing. The other really interesting thing about this performance and Dean's voice is that during the intro, we're actually at a higher pitch than when Dean is singing. So it means that not only is he going to be covering notes that he would be able to talk anyway, it means he's definitely not going to be straining his voice, but the notes that he hits as high notes in this song are lower than those that he uses in the intro when he's talking. And it's one of those things, obviously, you have to analyze his talking voice, as I have done, in order to find where he speaks and those pitches that he hits, because everybody talks in different pitches. It's just that you don't realize you're hitting notes when you're talking, but everybody does. So it means that when he sings, he goes lower than he normally talks. So this is where he finds all of that body, all of that sound. He starts on the B flat two, that's the first note. And throughout the performance, the highest note that we get to, he just touches on a B three, but it is pretty much a strict octave that we go through throughout this whole song. It's something that I mentioned about the great singers that just cover that octave to give you that light and shade in their performance. But when he was talking before this performance, he hit a C sharp three. So that is a higher note that he's hit talking than he hits in the song. He's got his range, he's got his sound, and he doesn't feel the need to have to go really high. And this is the great thing about great singers is their voices shine where their voices sit. They're not trying to sing out of their range. And it's something that if Dean started trying to hit high C's, you would just totally lose everything that is great about his voice. If anything, once you start adding in the richness of the tone and the lyrical content, it's a sound that draws you in to the message of the song and the vocalist's ability. So it has the exact opposite effect of going really high in your range and belting and hitting you with that part of the voice, just upper chest voice. 
So Dean's voice just had such quality to it that it did draw you in. The other thing that draws you in is how comfortable he is, his likability and his entertainment. He was just a natural entertainer. He had so many strings to his bow. The other thing is that Dean has this part of his act that I think is part act, but also part the fact that he probably did have a drink or two before going on stage to calm his nerves, but in no way was he out of control ever. It was just a very clever thing that he played on in order to be entertaining and also have that comedic element in there. It's something that is so entertaining to watch him do because it is so well done. You can tell that he is a singer with great ability, with great stylizations, the vibrato, and being able to slide into the notes so accurately, but also something that I mentioned in so many other videos about instrumentalists having that subconscious ability Dean has got this ability vocally to joke around and entertain while still luring his larynx and getting such full body to the sound and changing the lyrics, interacting with the crowd. There's so much going on here, but Dean is so natural at it that you can just relax into the performance. We all know as well that Dean was a great actor, great singer, TV personality, had his own TV show. So you can say that he was a great TV presenter as well. He could seemingly turn his hand to anything, but the acting is something that really did allow him to expand into the marketplace, even more so than just the comedy that he started with and the singing as well that was part of the comedy act. But we are gonna get into Dean's background just quickly because it is really interesting to go through. Dean's first language was Italian and he didn't start learning English until he went to school because his mum was Italian American. And he did drop out of school in his teenage years because he said that he thought he was smarter than the teachers. And it might be something that he didn't change his mind about later on in his life as well. So on leaving school, he bootlegged liquor. And this was during the prohibition. So it was dangerous ground to be on. He also worked at a steel mill and worked as a croupier at a speakeasy. And this was a place where they sold alcohol illegally. And and also a blackjack dealer and a welterweight boxer. It was something that Dean used to say that he won all but 11 of his 12 bouts. So he gave up the boxing, went back to being a croupier and a roulette stick man. He was also performing with local bands at this time and got his first break performing with the Ernie McKay Orchestra. And the band leader at that time was Sammy Watkins. And it was Sammy who suggested that Dino, as he was known at that time, Dino Paul Crocetti, should change his name, which he did to Dean Martin. So it was at a gig in New York that Dean met Jerry Lewis and they got on really well and decided to team up and put together their own comedy show with each other. In 1946 is when they did their first show and apparently it didn't go down particularly well and the venue said you're gonna have to change your act otherwise you're not gonna be able to do it here. So the next night they changed to doing songs and ad-libbing a bit, having some skits in there, and it went down really well. It was much more popular. And then just two years later is when they made their TV debut, and that was on the Ed Sullivan Show, which was called The Toast of the Town at that time. And just for reference, this would have been when Dean was 31 years of age. That partnership lasted for 10 years, and in 1957 is when Dean decided that he wanted to go solo, and he did star in a film called 10,000 bedrooms in 1957, but that wasn't a huge hit, unfortunately. Music-wise, being the late 50s, the sound was now changing to rock and roll. So the pop crooner sound, unfortunately, was being seen as on the way out and he decided that he wanted to get into serious acting. So he had a huge break with his acting in 1958 when he starred in The Young Lions and this also starred Marlon Brando, Montgomery Clift as well. The interesting thing about this is the part that Dean played had already been snagged by Tony Randall and the talent agency, MCA talent agency thought, hang on, if we get Dean that part in the movie, 
Dean could be a triple threat. It means that the talent agency could take a percentage of his shows that he would do at nightclubs, the movies that he could make, also the records that he could sell with his voice. So Tony Randall was offered a sum of money to relinquish that role in the movie and Dean was now in that movie. That same year, 1958, was the first time that he starred alongside Frank Sinatra. He was in a string of really popular movies. He was a movie, TV, and music star. He had his own TV show in the mid-60s. In fact, that is where the performance comes from that I looked at a couple of nights ago with Dean and Catalina Valente. So you can check that out if you want to independently. But a couple of years before that, I think it was 1966, that performance that I looked at, in 1964 is when he released Everybody Loves Somebody. And interestingly, that did knock the Beatles off the number one spot at the time because they were there with A Hard Day's Night. Just to mention the Las Vegas connection as well, because Dean was in Ocean's Eleven in 1960 with Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr. In that, Dean performs behind the piano. He sings Ain't That A Kick In The Head. But when the Rat Pack then came along, as I mentioned earlier in the video, those guys playing, performing live in Las Vegas was such a draw. So many people would come to see them, which of course meant that there were so many people on the Las Vegas Strip, and it meant that the casinos made a lot more money while those guys were performing. So he was ever present in movies and on TV, maintaining that from the late 60s, his show continued into the 70s on TV. And to bear in mind that he was also recording albums at this time, as many as four a year. It was 1983 that he teamed up with Conway Twitty, who you can also find on the channel here somewhere, and they released I Think I Just Wrote My First Country Song. Obviously, I'm not going to have time to get through everything that Dean achieved, considering as well that he excelled in so many different departments of the entertainment industry and the music industry as well. But it's great to have a look back at this video video. Another thing to mention is that Dean didn't make it overnight. He wasn't a teenage sensation. It wasn't until he was 31 that he started doing the comedy shows. And then just mentioning that last Conway Twitty collaboration, he was 66 years of age when he did that. So he certainly was advancing in years, but I think because of the way that he looked and his personality on stage, he was a lot older than people realized at the time. But thank you guys for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.